Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palnepan Manikam. I have a very, very interesting guest, very, very special guest. I love his angle um, to talk about how we can implement easy techniques during this intermittent fasting thing that we have been promoting so that you don't feel the pain that much and then also get the good quality nutrients in a simpler way. I'm more than happy to welcome Mr. Ashok Krishnan, who is the biggest selling um, uh, author of the biggest selling book, Masala Lab. I'm, I'm more than excited to meet him. Hello. hello, 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 Ashok. Thanks for joining. Pleasure, pleasure. I'm a big fan. So it's a, it's a great honor to be uh, on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you know, I know you are an engineer by profession and uh, a cook. Uh, cooking is your emotion. <laughs> no, absolutely. Emotion, passion. And also day to day, it's, it's also essential thing that you have to do on a absolutely. Day -to -day. absolutely. Yeah. I think I was just telling you that, you know, you should be the next Kupit Komali host. <laughs> <laughs> so um so people who don't know uh, um, uh, ashok is a wonderful cook and he has been doing this for the last 20 years and in, during the pandemic and he realized you know the science behind the indian cooking why we are doing what we are doing uh, has not been explored before uh, so he has written a book called masala lab i'll put that in the description as well please check that out it is one of the best selling books and the reason that i thought Krishna and would, Ashok would be a wonderful uh, addition to our uh, audience is that I've been promoting uh, uh, Ashok um, intermittent fasting or time restricted feeding and yeah. um, what I've been telling my patients is that hey you know just follow the circadian rhythm that we are born with and you, God doesn't want you to eat, watch late night movies okay to watch late night movies but not to eat at the same time so yes. Most of the audience that I have and also the question that I get is, okay, you know, you're trying to limit the time that you are eating. So yeah. what, what should we eat? And it's going to be a painful process during our busy lifestyle. So yeah. I want this interview to be uh, completely your platform to explore and also sure. add additional information to see how we can use your information during this eating window. So the first yeah, question yeah. to you is, most of the times what I encourage patients is that, hey, See, listen, um, um, you, I'm asking you to do a time-restricted feeding, right? So yeah. you need to have more quality nutrients into it. And the first question that people ask me is, hey, the easiest way to do is to use frozen items. And yeah. uh, people have this myth that frozen is always bad. So what is your yeah. take on it? No, so this is a very co a particularly common misconception only in India, though, no? uh, <laughs> which is that uh, somehow... That if you actually see, uh, if you look at all the things people are afraid of in India, there's a very common pattern, right? Anything that makes life easier in the kitchen, you will find that Indians are afraid of it. Right? <laughs> it's I almost it almost seems as if it is it's a conspiracy by Indian uncles who do not know how to cook, right? Uh, to keep women in the kitchen and yeah. to cook fresh food all the time. Also, so they were they they resisted pressure cooker in the past. They resisted uh, gas stuff. You know, they, only apparently only people are supposed to cook on wood fire. My grandfather right. used to say, "I only like food cooked on wood fire stuff." Right. <laughs> and now they're resisting microwave and ovens and air fryers and uh, and everything else, right? And and all the other things they concoct around, oh, this will give you cancer, that will give you cancer. I mean, like, I, it is it is literally, I think oncologists don't have a job. Our, our guys on WhatsApp are diagnosing cancer, like anything, like, like, you know, microwave will cause cancer, cell phones will cause cancer, <laughs> you know, frozen food will cause cancer, soy will cause cancer, and that's all. So, yeah, I, I think in a sense that I think uh, the fundamental idea is that uh, if you can utilize uh, the refrigerator effectively. And I don't think mm. Indians utilize it effectively. Right? Mm. Uh, and in a sense, I think my entire approach to cooking has always been that if you know the why, uh, it's not like so people sometimes think that scientists scientists can be arrogant, scientists can say do all kinds of things. But the process of science is essentially asking simpler and simpler questions till you understand it at the basics. Right. right. So sometimes you just ask, what does a refrigerator actually do? If you remember your school biology, the lower the temperature, lower the biological activity. That's as simple as that, right? And it, things you eat, uh, plants and animals, they're all living things. Um, and they're made of cells and they have enzymes and they have, and there's bacteria, and there's all these kinds of things around. The moment you lower the temperature, ac activity goes down, right? Activity so within ceases. the yeah, ceases, right? So mm. at around two to five Celsius in the regular uh, refrigerator, it doesn't cease entirely, but it slows down. Mm. But under minus 18 or minus 15, which is what the temperature in the freezer, it completely ceases. Yes. 
Yes. So, so literally people don't realize that if you put something in the fridge, you know, although I say, yeah, for Indians, I say two to three days, typically even up to six to eight days, you, you'll be perfectly fine. Most mm. things, especially mm. Indian food is very spicy and sour. Okay. Uh, which by itself is very, uh, does not harbor uh, bacteria as much because the sour acidic conditions, you know, already kill most of the bacteria and we anyway cook things till everything is killed anyway, right? So there is no, uh, very rarely do we eat raw food. So it's a, it's a, but so therefore, if you, you can actually, if you can plan your week around saying that, look, I'm going to say cut vegetables and keep it in the, mm. in the regular compartment. So I'm going to cook, day. if I want mm. a salad, you know, I, I'm sure you would have talked about it, right? That if before, when you eat, if you eat a salad first, mm -hmm. right, that is automatically going to suppress the 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 spike of the, the the glucose that you of whatever the carbs that you ultimately eat, because all of that resistance starts and the fiber is really going to slow the whole thing down, right? So so that's why. So if you get into that habit of say wanting to eat a salad, the biggest pain is now I have to cut sit and cut the carrots, sit and cut the cucumber. Exactly. It, it's, it's, so remember that you know in general, behavioral science says that it is it is very hard to change willpower. Mm, you can't mm. will yourself to say, yes, I am. doesn't matter. I'm going to make a fresh salad. I'm going to go buy the vegetables right now and make a salad. <laughs> Never works. But what works is that if you change the environment around you, yes, right? Yes. It, it's right there. It's, you open the fridge, the vegetables are there, then you will eat the salad. Right, right. So it's, it's just like this. Right? So if, you, if the cookie jar is by your bedside, you will eat the cookie. Right. So the solution is not to say improve my willpower. The solution is to move the cookie jar away to a very far away place. So you create the friction, right? Right. So if you want the habit of drinking water the first thing in the morning, keep a jar of water right next to the bed and you will wake up and drink. But if you have to walk, you know, 20 meters to drink it, you will never do that. Right. right. So I, that's the whole thing, right? So the whole thing is that if you can use the freezer and the fridge effectively, so you can cut vegetables, you can, you can keep basic things like, for example, uh, uh, even, even leftovers. People think that leftovers are, oh no, completely non-nutritious. No boss. See, the first, first principle is that nutrition loss is a, not some sort of simple binary term, right? Raw things have some nutrition. When you cook it, you are losing nutrition, period. Okay. Mm. But most things are also uh, inedible when, without cooking them. Mm. So technically speaking, wheat and uh, dal all have highest nutrition when they are raw. Okay. But right. you can't eat uh, you know, the, the dal raw or the, raw. the flour, mm. right? You have to make the chapati, right? Yes. The, the, make, the act of making the chapati reduces the amount of vitamin B by 25%. But, you know, you can't like stuff yourself with uh, atta <laughs> and, uh, and things like that. So... So people have to, have to have that perspective, right? And just because you keep the chapati in the fridge and eat it the next day, does not mean you somehow lose all the nutrition. You don't, right? It is still better than saying, no, no, this is old. So let me go buy that fried samosa and eat it because it is fresh. That, yes. that is where you sort of make a mistake, right? Uh. Because you, you, buy, you buy packaged food or a restaurant food. It is typically at least two to two and a half times more calories, right? So one of my favorite hobbies is to be able to look at something and guesstimate calories. It's not going to be accurate, but you just need to be, you know, you just need to sort of, you know, be consistent about it. Right? Right. Like a fistful of rice is is roughly about, say, you know, 80 to, for a man's, you know, about 80 to 100 calories. Right. right. Uh, this much of protein, like a piece of meat or chicken or something like that is, is likely to be around 130 or 140 calories and so on. A, a teaspoon of, you know, fat is pretty high amount of calories. Right. And so the point is that, uh, home cooked food is almost always going to be lower in calories. You're never going to put as much yes. oil and as yes. much all of that as as a restaurant does. Yes. And so, so this is because this because is the people, our family members are forced to come back to home. Yes, and, and again, so in general, home cooking is always sort of you know uh, evolved to where you know our grandmothers or mothers would yes. often have to yes. take an account that there is an old person. Uh, there is a, yes, a person with uh, you know diabetes. There's a person with heart disease. There's a young child. So the your cooking it almost yes. always has to somehow cater to everyone. So mm. in general, is always going to be healthier. Mm. So that this is a regular refrigerator. Likewise, you can be even more smarter. What I talk in my book is to say that look, you know, when you go to a restaurant and order a butter chicken or whatever it is, right, or say dal makhani, you know, if you're a vegetarian, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. Do you, you know. Uh, they're able to get it to your uh, uh, table in under ten minutes. Yes. It takes nine hours to make dal makhani from scratch. Okay? <laughs> so don't, don't think what you're eating in a restaurant is fresh, right? Right. That dal was boiled in the morning. That that gravy, that makhani gravy was made in the morning and frozen. Okay? Mm. The guy is putting it together, uh, adding tons of butter, uh, heat hot and hot butter on top, and he's serving it to you. That's what you're actually eating. Right? Mm. So, so the whole point here is that you can use some of those techniques very efficiently and you don't have to add like you know 100 grams of butter but you can definitely say you know what if i'm cooking or some kind of dal 
uh, I will cook double batch and put mm. it in the fridge. Right. Mm. So next day I want to eat that uh, chana or something like that. That's a fantastic way to uh, really save time, right? Uh, likewise, the gravies you make in the weekends. One of the things I do is to say, for example, let's t- let's take two styles. It's chetty nut style, right? So mm. I'm going to take uh, you know uh, uh, sesame oil and add garlic and ginger and curry leaves uh, and in uh, tamarind or any other things that I made and make a base. right or maybe even you know grated coconut and all that add water uh, reduce it and make a thick base and put it in the uh, freezer in ice cubes right so the next time i want to make say let's say i feel like eating uh, i need, i want to make some shrimp curry right uh, frozen shrimp uh, heat it in a little bit of oil two ice cube two cubes of this chettinad uh, uh, gravy and your your chettinad shrimp is ready right so and this literally takes 10 minutes and this is going to be Wow. Way way more healthier than mm. you trying to you know order something you know from a from a restaurant and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so so partially, the base gravies can also be frozen, right? Frozen. Mm. Uh, so essentially, I think it's it's quite fascinating in India. If you look at re- refrigerators, I was quite fascinated in the US. Refrigerators always have giant freezer compartments. Mm-hmm. because people really freeze a lot of food right mm. in europe and in japan in everywhere else you know so sometimes indian will say no americans are very unhealthy as if mm. i find boss ja- japanese right they live 25 years longer than indians do okay <laughs> and they use the freezer way more than uh, we do uh, so but in india the models of freezers the freezer will always be tiny yes <laughs> apparently indians don't use the freezer so the manufacturers like uh, people are complaining that your freezer is too big so we make the freezer <laughs> so it is you know that is so, that's the site of uh, so you people can be tremendously more productive right and forget about health right you can actually enjoy you can make more combinations if you have all of this prep work right you mm. don't have to worry about what am i going to cook today and all of that right so this kind of prep work takes the that effort as i said no if you have to put mental cognitive effort trust me what's the first thing you'll do you'll reach for some snack Yes, because your your brain uses up, and as when you're stressed, your brain uses up uh, a lot of glucose. You it will give that craving. Go go eat that popcorn. Go right. eat that snack. Go eat that chips, and so on. So as much as systems. possible, you want to take yeah, you want to take mm. that out of your equation so that it is just something that you uh, you, you should not be stressed about it at all, right? Mm-hmm. And again, mm-hmm. being anxious, being afraid of all of the pseudo science and uh, this is dangerous, that is dangerous. Uh, freezer will give you cancer. This will give you cancer. All of that stress is also not good for your intermittent fasting, <laughs> right? It's just going to be needlessly scared all the time. No, absolutely, absolutely. You know, so I have been promoting this Tiffin box method kind of thing. You know, like I actually take my Tiffin box. It's a small lag. Okay, perfect. So I actually take my Tiffin box to a get together at night, and then I've been telling uh, patients that hey, you know, not people that I don't think as a society we should eat anything after seven thirty, following our circadian rhythm. So I'm going to pack everything because I love food. I love food. I don't want to. um restrict myself but i'm going to eat it in the next day in the morning so the first thing that people say is that is even worse when you store that food in the refrigerator and then reheat it yeah what will you say so as i said so the the people in general one of the if you step back and think about why people get this wrong a, a, they essentially what they get is they get the prioritization of these risks wrong okay? mm. meaning that they simply don't realize that the very act of cooking is what is destroying the most amount of nutrition mm. not the act of storing not the act of reheating right mm. again remember that when you take it back from the fridge and you put it back on the stove you are literally recooking it again right? mm. and the longer you do that you are going to lose a lot more basically mm. again and also the other question is think about what are you exactly losing are you losing protein no are you losing no. carbohydrates no are you losing fat no you are at max losing water soluble vitamins that's the only thing micronutrients. that gets destroyed yes mm-hmm. micronutrients and that too only water soluble only water soluble mm-hmm. the fat soluble ones are already in the fat nothing yes. is going to happen right mm-hmm. uh, water soluble ones are the ones that are most susceptible to heat mm-hmm. right um, mm-hmm. and those are the ones and particularly vitamin b is particularly susceptible mm-hmm. and again so think about it right if that is all that is happening you can adjust that elsewhere yeah just add lead a little bit of salad a little bit more of spinach and you'll get it back right. drink a glass of milk i mean there are so many ways to get vitamin or take a supplement doesn't matter okay right there are just so many ways. so you're breaking your head over reheating food mm. over the loss of some tiny amount of vitamin b is not worth thinking about mm. so it's a prioritization thing right so if at all you want to do that the other the second problem though is that when you 
uh, reheat food, especially on the stove again, any kind of stove heating is uneven. Right. Mm. So when you are cooking food from scratch, it's fine because everything is uncooked. So over time, it will adjust and so on. But mm. when you are cooking anything on a stove, the on, the bottom part is at a much higher temperature than what is at the top. Right? Yes. Mm. So when you are reheating food, you are mm. you are risking the fact that you are going to burn some of the bottom because it's already cooked. You are really mm. literally overcooking it in that mm. sense. So from a taste standpoint, just flavor standpoint, it is actually better to use the microwave. Mm. Because why a microwave cooks the food entirely. simply because microwave operates only on one thing in this universe which is a water molecule that's it mm-hmm. right the, the the way the microwave works right. is that that specific frequency of microwave is just designed in such a way that it is able to make a water molecule flip and basically the microwave oven keeps changing the direction of the microwave so the water molecule keeps flipping so it it literally heats up the food mm-hmm. right and if you understand that you would realize that this is the most purest cleanest and the simplest form of cooking that is going to destroy the least amount there is no excess heat excess temperature one part getting burnt you know uh, the bottom part of the pan uh, overheating the top being undercooked you run none of that risk you're literally heating the water inside food and most food is mostly water right uh, that's why you can't actually heat things that don't have much water inside the microwave you microwave, can only heat right. things that have water right yeah it's okay. a when you put a microwave popcorn what's happening right inside that inside that seed is a tiny amount of water water okay. mm. the that water is turning to steam and mm. steam has occupies more area it is exploding right and that's why you had a popcorn okay right. so that is so essentially but you know but when you actually heat something like a gravy or a dal or something like that it's all mostly water mm. right and you're just it's not you're not you're not heating it enough to evaporate it you're just raising its temperature enough so mm. that it is palatable to you that's mm. all you're doing right mm. and therefore speaking from a nutritional law standpoint microwave is the most efficient a way of reheating food so if you and want to the the and preserving it mm. and that you are least likely to you see it's all a temperature game right mm. uh, once you are above the boiling point of water mm. which happens in a pan right that is where all the problem happens many molecules break down right mm. as long as temperature is well below the boiling point of water you 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 reduce the risk of damaging any of these molecules again remember we are largely only talking about water soluble vitamins which by the way you can get from elsewhere this is not something for you to worry about even. yeah yeah mm-hmm. to be honest i would just say don't worry about it just eat a salad along with your reheated food you have you have account you have accommodated for whatever vitamins you are losing okay? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but there is a recommendation that you know reheating the dish twice yeah um has been uh, associated with some kind of uh, uh, viral illness or something like that. what what is your take on that see the i don't think this the viral is uh, no viral uh, uh, stuff uh, comes here that sounds like you know uh, sort of pseudo science to be but mm. see there is there are few things like for example uh, rice for instance just plain cooked rice uh, can sometimes harbor a specific bacteria that's always there in the rice uh, and it if you if you if you just store plain cooked rice for too long in the fridge and keep reheating it you sometimes run the risk of that uh, bacteria uh, sort of uh, causing you food poisoning right it's exceedingly rare uh, and most people do not actually end up storing rice for too long because it gets very dry and hard okay mm. uh, and and so general people gen- maximum one day and and that's perfectly safe right mm. so therefore see these are so uh, again in general you know it's a, it's a question of balance right um if, if, if a food that is been reheated twice or thrice does not even taste good right so most people uh, you do when you're forced to do it for because you don't have time you have a tough job maybe you're a doctor you're running around and you just simply don't have time it's fine right once mm. in a while it's fine you know it's not going to really kill you right for the most mm. part but but yeah it's it's just that if you're doing it to every dish all the time you won't enjoy the food you're eating right. again let me tell you see if if you if you cannot the one of the greatest advantages of intermittent fasting and i've been doing it for 4 years now right nice. um uh, is the fact that i, I do 16 8 and trust me 16 hours i don't eat that eight hours i i i mindfully meditatively enjoy the food that i'm eating i want to eat the best tastiest most amazing food because right. i know that i have that freedom i don't have to worry about what i'm eating because right. i am eating in that window exactly. as long as i'm not going overboard with right. calories i am not worried this is maida this is jaggery yes. this is sugar yes. i with the weather this is polyunsaturated monounsaturated none of that just break just just keep all of that it doesn't matter right. just eat as long as you get your macro Uh, nutrient balance roughly approximately in a day uh, and you make sure that you're getting your micronutrients it doesn't matter whether it's maida or millet or rice or it doesn't matter 
because you are you are, therefore you are less to worry about right um, and you enjoy that food more and so i think you will automatically make sure uh, that you are not reheating like 10 times and all of that right 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 no absolutely so uh, the other thing is your uh, 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 non stick cookware that you yes. put around. that's that's other myth i want to bust as well so can you explain yeah. that as well see non stick it's a, it's a okay so on the face of it there are the again the this is a complex issue when a lot of uh times when people say non stick is bad aluminum is bad that is bad that is bad you know or, or uh, uh, the 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 chicken you buy has antibiotics or it is genetically modified or the uh, all of that stuff right there are a couple of things there so one is uh, people forget the um affordability aspect meaning that for what you and me can afford to buy organic free range highly you know sustainably grown stuff etc but because but they, it imposes a cost right and for the most for people on the planet uh, they cannot afford right so there is the one thing to keep in mind right so even when it comes to vessels uh, everyone cannot cook on uh, highly seasoned high quality cast iron uh, tri ply stainless steel that's expensive right. it's, it's expensive right and and so therefore certain materials tend to be cheaper uh, and um, and in a sense that is one angle the second angle is that people sometimes confuse problems that occur in the manufacturing of something versus when you actually use it for cooking that's the confusion with non stick mm. there is no doubt that the manufacturing of non stick material the the polytetrafluoroethylene which whose trademark is dupont uh, you know teflon you know by mm. dupont and so on the manufacturing of that e- involves a lot of chemicals that are not good for when they leak into the water or for the workers who work in those factories in the past it has been shown that it's not great uh, for the for the people who make those things right but in never in the last 30 or 40 years has has there been any conclusive evidence that consumers using it in their homes are suffering from any serious consequences as a result of that final product because as i've explained it has been chosen because it is remarkably non reactive Mm. it right? it does ptfe reacts with nothing right mm. now see there again the other problem is that people will say no no microplastics uh, risk is there boss that's a deeper problem you know you are getting microplastics everywhere right the, in the milk you drink in in the vegetables you eat in the fish you eat you think the fish is the fish are eating all the plastic in the ocean and you are eating the fish so that is a wider problem that we have to fix as a society right, right. you can't targetedly only say if i stop eating non stick i'm not getting microplastics you're deluding yourself right right, right. Mm-hmm. so you have to weigh the overall risk and say look net net what do i get by using non stick mm. um, is the fact i get convenience and convenience is very very important if your if you if your if your cooking is not convenient trust me it makes it double uh, yes. as difficult to maintain a diet yes, you want absolutely. it to be easy you want mm-hmm. it to be convenient right it mm-hmm. is convenient never underestimate convenience in achieving your uh, you know nutritional goals and so on right mm-hmm. uh, and to that effect like for example if you had to make an omelet and eggs are great right mm-hmm. you, you want to do that on stainless steel by all means do it and then waste the next 2 hours trying to wash that uh, uh, thing because <laughs> eggs will stick to stainless steel like anything right 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 because you know amino acids react with metals they will stick that's just right. the way that's basic chemistry i see and I see. that's where like if you want to be dead safe at the very least use your non stick for making eggs mm. right I mean, mm. it's a it's a great way to do that, and you can. By the way, you end up having to put less oil. That you have another added benefit if you yes. want to looking to restrict restrict your calories. Calories. You want to be on a caloric deficit. That's a great way. You can cook eggs on a nonstick uh, without with little or no oil. Right? Mm. Um, and so, so therefore, think you have to weigh those balances before. Yes. So it's really about prioritizing risks. That's the problem, right? I think people have this. See, in in social media, the problem is. these algorithms and whatsapp and facebook and instagram and everything their algorithms are like what can i show you that will scare the hell out of you so that you keep scrolling right that is the, that is the goal of these algorithms right so and and that is one the second thing is these all these mainstream media outlets they will read some science paper which is maybe they experimented on this one thing for some 10 right. rats uh and they force fed it and they found some problem that's what uh, happened with covid that's what happened yeah mm-hmm. so these so what what the what the newspaper is like okay if i say oh this test on rats caused this problem who will want to read <laughs> it's a better headline if it says x causes cancer okay right if i put that then everybody will click everybody will be uh, i and I'm, i'm i'm more afraid i want to consume the other the third thing that happens on social media is uh in when you read a newspaper 
right? There is the main news. It's right on top. And then there is small bits of news. Then there's something on the fourth. There's an intuitive sense that what is on the front page is more important than what is on the fourth or fifth page, right? In social media, everything is equal. Yeah. So people exactly. have no sense of priority, right? right? Like for example, as I keep telling people that you're wasting your time asking me, is 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 it okay? Will I lose nutrients uh, when I reheat something? Yes. Is it, yes. Your bigger problem is not that, right? Yeah. Your <laughs> elephant in the room is the fact that you're eating too much. Right. So you fix right. that problem. Okay. That therefore it is not about whether uh, and same thing with preservatives, right? Is it? You are worried about a biscuit having preservatives. The problem is the biscuit. You first biscuit. fix that problem. Right. You you eating ten biscuits without preservatives does not mean it's healthy. Okay. Right. Right. Your biscuit is the and but if you're eating only one biscuit, then it doesn't make a difference whether you're eating one uh, one with preservatives <laughs> or not because the sheer amount of milligrams involved there are so tiny. Mm -hmm. And you are being moderate, so you don't worry about it at all. So the problem with social media is that everyone thinks everything is equally important. It's not. It, there right. is no sense of. Uh, what is high priority, what is low priority. And the priorities get distorted based on who's telling it, right? So <laughs> some guy, some God man, some guru says, oh, you must you must not eat this. You, this, is, uh, this is dangerous, etc. People somehow think that guy knows more than a doctor or a nutritionist. Right. So there is, that's that another happens, problem, right? That happens in yeah. the medical field as well, right? So the patient will be hospitalized, intubated, have pneumonia, we give antibiotics. Then the question they ask is, did the antibiotic have any side effects? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, that's the problem. Right, the major problem is that whether he will survive or not, right, with the intubation thing. So, yeah, um, absolutely right. I think the priorities matter as well. So, in my, in our, in my, I mean, I mean, everybody should be following this method. This uh, time restricted feeding thing that you have been following, I'm very very glad that yeah. in this thing. Uh, so the main thing is convenience. It has to be convenient. If it is not convenient, it's not going to be sustainable. And I completely 100% agree with you. And yeah. can you educate us about meal prepping? Like how to yes. plan next week or next day? Yeah. So meal prepping, generally prepping, right? So again, if you go back to the basic science, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we largely eat plants or animals. Okay? Yes. Uh, and if you... Essentially, plants are where you get carbohydrates from, and animals are where you get protein from at a very simplistic level, right? Mm -hmm. at the basic level. Okay? Uh, and 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 so therefore, because plants uh, uh, cannot move, uh, the way they are structured and the way uh, etc. They have firmer cell walls, so which is why vegetables are the way they are. Uh, in that, it's interesting. So when you when you cook vegetables, they become soft. Mm -hmm. When you cook meat, it becomes hard. Yeah. Right. So when you put salt. Um, on 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 plant material, it shrinks because it uh -huh. dehydrates. When you put salt with regard to meat, it makes it more juicy because muscles, when they have salt, they retain more moisture. That's why when you run a marathon or get really tired, you when you drink electrolytes and water, it needs to have salt. Good. Um... Right? So because that salt will keep will keep you from losing muscles from losing more uh, water, right? Mm, so that's mm. why I, I think you know one of my hacks that in the book is if you want really juicy chicken because chicken breast dries really. Uh, and but also chicken breast is very convenient as a protein because you know it's it's easy you can you know cook it very quickly and so on but it gets very dry right mm -hmm. so soaking it in uh, like uh, uh, soaking it in an eight percent salt solution for one hour right will change forever how you enjoy chicken because it'll make it'll keep it juicy wow. no matter how long mm -hmm. you cook right and Indians nice. tend to overcook chicken right yes so absolutely. these so this is like for example some of these things right so from a prep standpoint which means that you have to approach meat separately and you have to approach uh, plants separately, right? Mm -hmm. Now, each of these uh, plants again, you have to remember. So, uh, meat is is dead. All the cells are die when the animal dies, because the nature of an animal is it needs central nervous system, it needs heart, everything else, blood. So, once the animal dies, the cells die. Plants are still alive. So, so plants only die when you when you kill them in the kitchen. Right? In so the, kitchen. the cells don't <laughs> die, right? Or or when you actually eat them, your saliva, the, your acids, acids. And all of that will kill the mm -hmm. air, right? Mm -hmm. So, etc. So, which therefore means that uh, a plant is far more like a vegetable is far more likely to get oxidized, uh, and enzyme enzymes are likely to break out, etc. Uh, uh, and a different category of spoiling happens to plants versus meat, right? Mm -hmm. So, meat meat in uh, which is why it's safer to generally freeze meat as as much as possible uh, you can keep it in the main fridge but only if you're using it pretty quickly don't let meat sit in the regular temperature this thing for too long right? mm -hmm. um, and, uh, especially if it is any kind of you know uh, sausages are different in general you shouldn't be eating too many sausages but in general uh, at least like fish or chicken etc if you're if you're not using it within the next 24 hours 
please freeze it don't put mm-hmm. it in the regular this thing because it's it's a that's like a buffet for bacteria mm-hmm. and it's not like fridge has no bacteria and so on, right so you have to think about it that way there are some exceptions how you can how you can make it easy if you marinate it right mm-hmm. and what is marination there's an acid again less lime juice and yogurt and all of these yes. other things are acids right yes. and acids are exceedingly inhospitable to microbes mm-hmm. so when you marinate and keep then you can keep it in your regular uh, compartment for a longer time right mm-hmm. so on the weekend uh, you know you you cut different uh, you know whatever it could be uh, shrimp or it could be chicken or fish, fish. or whatever mm-hmm. it is mm-hmm. so in fact wh- it, that's why even in the past it, normally when people used to buy even before refrigerators they immediately put turmeric and uh, things like that and soak it in lime juice yes. or something like that and salt like and keep it so it improves the shelf life otherwise you know it, it's going to spoil so this is how you deal with meat it's a good way to marinate and keep it that's one right brine marinate keep that way i think salt and all of that will essentially keep it for a longer time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. vegetables again what is critical is you do not want um if you are cutting vegetables then you have to put it in an air tight as good an air tight just ziplock and all is generally not Concrete. great mm-hmm. get yourself air tight Uh, boxes like you know what you get in say ikea or something where mm-hmm. where it's completely properly airtight for cut vegetables but herbs and things like leaves uh if you put them completely airtight they will spoil inside they will like you know so they need a little bit of air mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. what happens is that the enzymes inside when in the lack of oxygen will turn the whole thing to mush i see mm-hmm. so you mm-hmm. want to make sure that when you're storing herbs and all of that it needs to be a little bit airy that's why at least you know in in india when you uh, the the small box that you get for storing coriander and curry leaves yes. will have few holes uh, right? uh, so so that way you want to store those uh, in that and so on right so in general uh, air tight yeah fruits fruits no fruits so fruits are very important never store fruits near vegetables mm. in the fridge i see so here's mm. what happens let's so remember that technically botanically speaking vegetables and fruits are all fruits in, yeah. in the in the botanical sense right, right. Mm-hmm. the only difference is that uh, uh, fruits are sweeter they just have more sugar right mm-hmm. uh, whereas the and also remember think of it from the plant a sweet fruit a plant wants you to eat a fruit that is not sweet the plant does not want you to eat so mm-hmm. and it and it, it it makes a lot of other chemical tricks to prevent you from eating it but we have figured out a way to eat it by cooking it Uh, okay. but that, so that is why many of them are inedible raw right mm. they'll be very tannic and many of them will actually have things that will you know burn your so like a, a really raw mango will 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 really burn some of your other uh, things right mm. um, like how pineapple is a great example right so pineapple has a has a protease enzyme uh, you feel that that sort of feeling when you buy eat a pineapple it's that protease enzyme trying to digest your uh, so literally as they say you no know, when you eat the pineapple the pineapple is trying to eat you eat you <laughs> it just it it just fails unfortunately but yeah right, so right. because we are we are bigger <laughs> better but it works against insects and you know other things so that's why insects stay away from pineapple and so on. so so you want to keep fruits away because fruits tend to generate ethylene gas which causes everything else to ripen and you don't mm. want your vegetables to ripen and remember uh, ripening uh, reduces uh, nutrients mm. why because only priorities produce sugar I it's see. not good for you right mm. so so a, a, a raw mango is generally significantly more healthier in micronutrients than a fully ripe mango i see fully ripe mm-hmm. mango is just basically death by fructose okay it's just all mm-hmm. fructose right? so so therefore uh, so the uh, so you have to be, and you have to remember all these things because this it's a it's a live thing so it is making decisions on the go right like for example potatoes are underground uh, they they live their entire lives underground you placing them in the kitchen right if you're placing them around a lot of light the way they are programmed is oh i i must be i'm seeing light so let me sprout because then i can photosynthesize so it will sprout green leaves and that's not good because then it will say since i'm producing these new babies i want to make sure nobody eats this starch source so let me produce a poison called solanine um, which which will keep all of these insects away for humans it fight is a mild stomach upset if you get if you eat too much of the the green patch wala potatoes but mm-hmm. so that's why you want to keep potatoes in a slightly closed environment but not air tight so you still want some air to be there so you know put them in like newspapers and and keep them in your uh, uh, this thing for so that your your potatoes don't sprout and so, so right? how do you space so you want, between the so vegetables on the top and fruits on the bottom yeah so if you have uh, depending on how your fridge is keep yeah. the 
keep the fruits farther away from the vegetables, especially mm. things that will cause ripening, right? Uh, because the ethylene gas produced by the fruits will end up ripening everything else, right? Mm. I mean, outside of the fridge, a banana is a the largest producer of ethylene. Okay, mm. uh, so you don't want to keep anything near the banana; otherwise, it, they will also ripen really, really fast. So that uh, is true so, for even banana, right? Raw banana is much more nutrient than uh, way more. Way. Way so more there nutrient. is a, so there is a, it's a it's a it's a peak thing, right? So first, it's mm. inedible. Then it reaches a level of peak, firm, not too sweet ripeness, which is ideal for you. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's just sugar and alcohol. Okay, people don't no, realize. I just had this fruit right ripe next to me. It's a good, beautiful example. So this is uh, persimmon. It's it's available persimmon, here in, yeah. in, in yes. California. Yeah. So look at this. This is already getting ripened, right? And yep. I love this because. Because it's tasty, and the taste is because yes. of the sugar. And I think sugar. there is an unripened persimmon as well, which is not people are not very fond of because it is not that tasty. It's not tasty, yeah. <laughs> and 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 the other thing is that see, the thing is that so once uh, once fruit becomes really really ripe, uh, the the sugars are also uh, uh, will will ferment. Ferment. The yes. bacteria and yeast in the air will ferment it. Yes. So a really when a banana becomes slightly dark black. It's like 0.5% alcohol. So uh, just so you know, right? So so the, yeah, so it's really fermented that. fruit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, you really want to either make a, you know some sort of a paramburi or some sort of a you know pudding type of or okay. banana bread or something like that. Anyway, you know, which again uh, is not a great uh, <laughs> You know, this brings me the I'm I'm learning so much in this interview interview. So because you know, in fatty liver patients, we say that you know fructose is really bad. And in the gastroenterology yes. book, there is a thing that hey, you know, avoid um fruits rich in fructose. Um yes. but but the, but the thing is, you know, again, it's a balance. You know, you cannot eat biryani and then uh, say avoid just uh, fruits alone. But if you're really <laughs> exactly. conscious about it, I think what you're making telling is make more sense because if you eat an unripened fruit, maybe it is not that much yeah. rich in fructose. I think it'll be okay. It won't be exactly. Wow. So it, it, again, it's about wow. balance, right? So in the sense that mm -hmm. see again, again, if people overcomplicate it, and it's like if you're in living in India, and if you're in summer. And you say, you know what? I'm only going to write unripe mangoes. That's a very sad life. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you I, do want I to see. be able to enjoy the yes. delicious sweetness yes. of a mango. But if you're eating three mangoes a day, you might want to reevaluate oh. whether that's a good thing, right? Correct. So, Correct. so in that sense, I think you know it is really about being aware, right? Mm. Uh, and like for example, so let's say you know uh, eat 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 a mango, mm -hmm. then eat guavas. Guavas are actually typically low on fructose, so. India, I think it's generally good to have, like in many countries now, I think they have this sort of, you know, this color coding for, you know, green for like best, like, you know, high fiber, yes. high antioxidant yes. Yes. versus red is like, you know, ultra processed, you know, right. deep fried and all that, right? So you should have a mental, this thing of mango is probably sort of like a, it's still a fruit. So yeah, mm. you still get fiber. All of that mm. is fine. Mm. It's not quite the, it's not quite green. I would say yellow, right? Uh, you want to say, you know what, if I'm eating a little bit of that, maybe I have a guava. Maybe I have something that's not as sweet. right? So things like grapes and things like apples and things like mangoes tend to be very high on fructose. Bananas mm. and all that. Ripe bananas. right? Mm. But a guava, even a ripe guava is not that sweet. Mm. right? So mm. so it, it's good to sort of mix and match. And, and generally, I think, you know, don't break your head. But yeah. So, uh, you know, as I said, no, there, which is why I, uh, one of the first things I... I was watching your videos back in the day and I was when I was first researching this entire intermittent fasting and going into the YouTube rabbit hole of you know fructose being a, a big problem and so on. Um and the and the recommendation that you know what fruit juices are not as good as uh, they are made out to be. You actually want to eat if at all you want to eat the fruit, eat the fruit. Uh, <laughs> don't like drink like a one liter of a fruit juice that you're literally just glugging fructose, okay? Uh -huh. uh, and without without all of the benefits of the, 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 the rest of the fruit. Right. Uh, yeah, the fiber and all the rest of that. That yeah. Wow! Exactly. Wow! This is, this is amazing. This is amazing. So what, you know, but people do add some flavors to keep yes. it sustainable, and that's where the whole processing thing comes, right? So how do you see yeah. this from the food industry? See, the food industry. It's again a complicated question. So mm. on the at a at a social level, mm -hmm. we are now living in a world where. Uh, it's a very silly, right? A hundred years ago, it was this opposite. Okay, right now we're living in a world where the more processed the food, the cheaper it is. I see. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the the cheapest calories actually come from the high ultra, -processed. ultra processed food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, it's very simple. What, what what are you doing is that uh, you are removing every part of the food 
that might spoil that might uh, get destroyed by heat that might mm. not be shelf stable right mm. and again you're also making unnatural combinations that your body is not used to right, mm. right? so your body is we evolved as hunter gatherers we were only hunting animals and eating the occasional berry and some roots and all of a sudden you you take something like one of these uh, uh, packet snacks which is just like which is ultra processed wheat ultra processed and all these uh, other uh, flavor uh, additives and all of that Man, our ancestors have never encountered that so we have no way of really uh, so our body can't deal with it this is like oh wow this is amazing this is delicious so it's it's like hitting all of the it's like it's like an addiction in that sense right so so that's the danger right so in the sense that that's the extreme value but at the same time what i often also tell people is that look you know if you go to the internet you will see over simplified things that say processed bad unprocessed good boss that is nonsense okay you you know you, You, your rice is if you, without processing it's inedible okay. right somebody has to remove the husk otherwise the, have yes. you ever so most people who eat rice have you ever seen a rice plant have you seen what that grain looks like and have you seen how hard it is to remove right have you seen wheat everyone so so or have you for example do you think people one more dangerous thing that people do this new habit of drinking unpasteurized milk straight from the animal are you oh, kidding man. me the the mm. back the risk from the bacteria in many countries it's banned in the us i think it's mostly banned in yes. the states you can't drink you can't sell raw milk right so yes. and and think of, so the pasteurization is also processing and people will say no no it destroys nutrients are you it is it is literally <laughs> it's saving you in 30 seconds right it's saving you right <laughs> you're not losing anything right uh, and so therefore so the question to ask is what processing right? uh-huh. if it is the basic process for example yes so if i if i remove the husk and all of the bran and all of the germ then you get maida from wheat right Oh, you're only leaving behind the starch and protein. That's it, right? In atta, you leave behind some of the bran so that there is more fiber. In whole wheat flour, like what you get in the US, you leave all, all more the of the bran so that there's a lot more fiber, right? Right. But at the same time, if you are like uh, say that no, no, I'm I will now eat whole wheat Malabar parota, and you think that is healthier, you are missing the point. Okay. Yes. <laughs> your, your choice, your decision to eat the parota is the problem. Right. now you can't feel you can't say oh i am now i am i am eating whole wheat parotta so no it is fine right <laughs> that difference between that is very tiny right right so uh, first understand what the processing is doing right and again think keep keep it so all it means is that lesser basic processing doesn't really make a difference mm. the more and more the processing and more and more the combination of things that don't exist naturally in nature classic example is chicken nugget right mm. mcdonald you know style chicken nugget no where in nature does protein uh, animal protein exist with carbohydrates it just right. doesn't exist right doesn't because mm-hmm. animals are just protein and fat that's right. just the way they are we don't have mm-hmm. stores of carbohydrates okay <laughs> and uh, and uh, and plants don't store like muscle tissue okay? yes so you are taking chicken and you're taking maida and you're making this thing and then deep frying it so fat protein and carbohydrate in a combination that does not exist in nature it is like your your it is ultra processed right so mm. again i'm not saying you don't enjoy that it's delicious it's mm. delicious because your brain says that this is i am getting all nutrients this is just amazing just keep eating more of it right right uh, and so it keeps me and, and and it does not it none of these trigger your satiety these things and you want to keep eating right and and so what happens is that you just want to say a spectrum and say this i will eat as a special this thing oh you know mm. what once a month once a week i'm enjoying chicken nuggets fine right so don't break your head if it is something that is relatively less processed fine you know you might want to do it once or twice a week and so on uh, things that you make largely unprocessed or minimally processed feel free to use it in your day day to day you know or cooking and so on it should be that simple right rather right. than you know break your head over what right uh, right the problem with this once in a while is sir i always have problem because the once in a while comes for each and every ingredient and you don't have you only have 21 meals a week <laughs> <laughs> and there like 21 yeah, I, once once in a while in a week So, yeah. uh, so no, I, 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 I don't know. So I have, yeah. So in my family, you know, we've we've tried all. You know, me and my wife essentially uh, have like a uh, oneness that we have. Like, okay, so by cuisine, right? So Monday is North Indian, Tuesday is yeah. uh, Kerala cuisine. She is Malayali, right, and so on. <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday, Tamil cooking, and then uh, so Friday is go out and eat. Saturday is order and eat. So two days uh-huh. of the week, uh, we'll sort of you know again, both of us are working and so on, right? Right. Uh, and and again so it is it is essentially you can sort of whatever works for you at the end of the day right yes, um, yes. yeah I, i know the world of food is just there is just so much amazing food out there and 
uh, you'll need an entire lifetime to try and enjoy all of it and so on uh, but but you know i i think you know uh, as I, i know this is sort of like a uh, the eating is literally the only day to day assault on your body right is is what people don't realize okay right right and right. the reason and the reason you have to think of it as an assault is because nothing you're eating today right uh and people say ancestors look human beings spent more time being hunter gatherers than being agricultural people so our body is designed for the hunter gatherer it's not mm. designed for the agri in fact mm. a lot of the metabolic diseases essentially start coming after the invention of agriculture and the cons- large scale consumption of grains right till then we did not see diabetes we did not see all these other problems we did not see obesity we did not see forget we did not see tooth decay mm-hmm. right so you see see all these fossils right ancient man who lived before uh, discovered agriculture fantastically healthy teeth till they die because we have the fossils moment we start growing rice and wheat and sugar cane and all of that you start to see lot of tooth decay and all the fossils you know and all of the burial uh. sites and so on right and all the teeth right so so essentially we means that we have we have a body uh, that is being assaulted by 21st century food uh, but our digestion system is still stuck for 200000 years ago okay. so you have to you have to remember that right i mean basically it essentially st- so and how and think about what life was like back then right uh, you you ate when you could not like two three meals a day okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, oh yeah, yeah, now yeah. the sun is here uh, lunch time no doesn't how, that's not how yeah. it works because you got to go hunt an animal and it takes right. hours sometimes days right and when you when you hunted it it's going to rot so right. you better eat everything one shot put on a lot of fat very quickly so that by winter you may not be able to hunt yes. and your body fat is going to rescue you Absolutely. right by the way people apparently would not eat anything for days right and live off their body fat so we are designed for that right but somehow in the modern age in the last 4 5000 years once agriculture was discovered and now now that we have ultra processing and packaged food this is food that our bodies and brains have never encountered mm. evolutionarily right your mind may know it but your body doesn't your enzymes don't your uh, ghrelin and all the rest of your system has no clue it is designed for eating one animal once a week and during summer whenever there are berries that's the only time you get carbs boss right. nothing else right right uh, so that right, is right, a no. pretty much so is it, yeah exactly right yeah i know absolutely so you know when you eat something the you know yeah. when a um, pathophysiology wise you are destroying 10% of your acid producing cells in your stomach the stomach is getting assaulted exactly. every time and that is yeah. one more reason that i've been promoting this technique is that overnight the growth yeah. hormone comes in and then repairs all yes. the damage that you've been doing during the day um, but if you have to give some time the research says that you need at least 12 hours <laughs> at least 12 hours yeah. of fasting to get yes. the repair done so that the cells become fresh and yeah. that's where i strongly believe that the cancerous transformation happens exactly your ancient ancestors forget 12 hours boss your ancient ancestors were doing 36 48 hours easily <laughs> without even thinking <laughs> Right, right right they would just eat a giant they would hunt an animal get some berries eat or dig up some roots eat and then chill out for the next 48 hours okay right right like it, it, it is remarkably uh, incidentally e- even hunter gathering few hunter gathering societies stuck in the amazon and all that you look at them they still have the uh, same habits they don't eat like three times a day and so on right right so, yeah, those those if, if people think like they people immediately think i'm getting a headache i need to eat now that somehow that's bad no I, you know what i i mean i uh, i when i first started out started doing 12 hours uh, 13 hours was hard okay but right. just simply over extended half an hour every day yes. till you get to 16 hours and now yes. i i in, in fact when i wake up in the morning from morning to when i eat at 12 noon i am remarkably productive sharp yes right you know yes. thank there's you something about that, a mental yeah. acuity that yes. being being hungry but not being hungry in a negative way this is sort of almost like a positive feeling of hunger right and, and there is a lot of research to it as well yeah exactly and that i can do so many things and like what is my reward for doing being so productive a fantastic meal at 12 and i really right. look forward to that yes yeah. absolutely it increases your metabolic yeah. rate and that's have been shown in multiple studies yeah, as well exactly this has been a wonderful <laughs> wonderful interview i learned a lot more but i want you to summarize one or two points that my audience and your audience can also take home so that they can implement in their daily yeah. practice and this is just not a youtube video and just say oh you're good uh, exactly. like, click like and then go to the next video yeah i would really say embrace uh, prepping ahead meal prep is the one single thing that will save you time 
you will eventually end up with tastier food by the way mm. right? because flavor is all about layering so if you have mm. something that's already prepped and some part of your ingredients you make fresh the combination of that is much tastier by the way restaurant that's why restaurant food is tastier okay it's all mm. about layering right mm. so and uh, again so prep is hugely crucial please embrace that and to do that you need to embrace uh, the freezer the microwave and the regular fridge compartment this is very very important right uh, and other things again I, again if you're really advanced please teach yourself how to lacto ferment those are also fantastic methods you you in fact make a lot of things very healthy uh, and and I, i know i have there are videos you can see on my instagram on um how you can lacto ferment everything from carrots to radishes uh, to cabbage uh, to to kimchi and all of these things are fantastic right i mean i think uh, they are sour they're pleasantly tasty um and they're filled with uh, a lot of micronutrients Nutrients. that you would mm-hmm. otherwise yeah yeah right because fermentation produces a lot of uh, of these things and so on right so those are advanced things that you can sort of teach yourself and so on. um and the second thing that i want you to really take away is really first you have to prioritize convenience over uh what social media assaults you with this is good this is not nutritious this is unnutritious this one ingredient is magic first stop billing in the idea of things like super food and all that okay mm-hmm. it doesn't that's not how our body works um, mm-hmm. please stop believing in nonsense like immune boosters and all that you cannot boost your immune system <laughs> the only way to do that is to take a vaccine or something like that other, other than that you have the only way to do that is to go out and get sick that's how you boost get sick system. exactly you, exactly you can't, you can't boost your immune system by eating some look when you get sick and if you're eating well your immune system is well prepared to deal with it mm-hmm. that's how that's how you have to think about food okay it's not about if i take one this turmeric water 10 times a day i will boost my immune system is not how this works right right and if you drink that water and then eat uh, pa- parotta kothu parotta and uh, you know burger uh, that turmeric is you know, not really going to help you if you change your lifestyle and then also drink turmeric water then yeah maybe you know you can say that it helps right. so right. so forget so forget this idea that you have to optimize every single thing Mm. that the, the meaning the word the meaning of the word optimize is not about optimizing every single thing it's about mm. looking at it holistically and when you look at it holistically convenience is the single most important thing if you fix that then you will have the mental bandwidth to make the right choices right and not worry about whether oh it's aluminum or it's non stick yes. none yes. of those matter as much as you think it does mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, what you eat and how much you eat dwarfs everything else right <laughs> you fix that and 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 at the third point as you said the timing right you fix these three things it doesn't matter right you eat uh, you eat uh, biscuit uh, maida parotta whatever it is it doesn't really matter as long as it's in moderation and you are getting all the other uh, you're eating it in a balanced way uh, and you don't worry whether it is cooked on cast iron or aluminum or non stick you don't worry about whether it was cooked in a microwave whether it was frozen or whether it was in a fridge uh it doesn't really matter as much as you think it does right and mm. that's the problem so i think you know stop believe so if somebody is scaring you on social media right about oh etc etc very simple ask some detailed questions people will say this will detox you what will it detox you of just ask the next question you will find that they won't have an answer right right most of these so so it, it that's not how it works your boss your kidney and your they, that is what is detoxing you boss nothing you eat is detoxing you in general you want to detox the 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 it is the idea is not to put more things inside okay. right the idea is to give it a break okay. absolutely so, right absolutely. otherwise the detox only is relevant when you're like say it's serious uh, like drug addiction heroin that 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 is a medically that a doctor has to do that okay that it is it is not, you can't some drink some buy some product and so first and foremost make sure that you respect your body and make sure prioritize convenience and then stop watching listening to any scaremongery right <laughs> ask some questions if somebody says oh this is dangerous okay how this ingredient is dangerous how much am i getting this preservative dangerous how much am i eating how much am i eating anyway right how much have i been eating before right did mm. it really make a big difference and so on mm-hmm. if you eating like 100 grams you'll get a few milligrams you know come on just simple chemistry will tell you that it's too small right, right. the dose is, the dose makes the poison okay it's not the poison that makes the poison. exactly <laughs> Just simplify your, you know, mind and uh, and just be 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 more adventurous. Be enjoy food, right? You will fast more effectively if you actually, you know, uh, enjoy food better. Absolutely, because fasting actually food, makes you enjoy you, food better. Yeah. When you restrict food, then it's a problem. When you restrict, yeah. when you restrict if you hate timing, food, if you are like doing that, that's a that's a toxic attitude to food, and that you'll never be able to keep it up. You'll silently go, you know, whenever there is some small cookie, and you'll quietly. you'll fool yourself that say that no i actually didn't eat it you'll lie right. to yourself and you'll lie to others yeah right. that's what right. <laughs> 
Super, super. Thank you so much, Ashok. Thank you. Thank you very much. All my audience, please follow his channel as well. And also please click the link uh, below for his book. And I absolutely learned a lot. Looking forward to work with you in future as well. Thank you for your time. Good fun. Thanks. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.